100 Practice CNA Exam Questions with Rationales Question number 1. While giving an unconscious patient a bath, it is important to a. Give passive range of motion to all joints. b. Let the team leader exercise the patient's joints. c. Call the physical therapist to exercise the patient afterwards. d. Exercise the patient only if the doctor has ordered it. The correct answer is a. Passive ROM should always be given with the bath on an unconscious patient. Question number 2. A patient who is on suicide watch should be allowed to have a. A glass container of flowers in her room. b. A leather belt. c. A mirror. d. Pictures of her family. The correct answer is d. Pictures of her family. An inventory of a patient's personal items, including clothing, should always be made on admission, and unsafe items should not be placed in the room. Question number 3. A patient chokes while eating. The first thing the nursing assistant should do is, A. Ask the patient if she is choking. If so, perform the Heimlich maneuver. B. Call for a licensed person. C. Slap the patient between the shoulder blades. D. Tilt the victim's head back and give two quick breaths. The correct answer is, A. The Heimlich maneuver, also referred to as abdominal thrusts is an emergency response technique that can save a life in seconds. It is a simple action that will often dislodge food. Question number 4. A patient who has been depressed and complaining of feeling hopeless suddenly appears happier one morning and says that everything is okay now. A good nurse aide. A. Congratulates the patient on getting better. B. Watches the patient more closely. C. Voices concern to the rest of the staff. D. B and C. The correct answer is, D. A good nurse aide watches more closely and voices concern to the rest of the staff. A person with smiling depression can appear to be cheerful, optimistic, and generally happy. They may smile to attempt to hide signs of depression. Question number 5. The circulatory system consists of the, A. Heart, arteries, veins, and capillaries. B. Blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. C. Heart, aorta, pulmonary vessels, and lungs. D. Blood vessels, lymph nodes, and spleen. The correct answer is, A. The heart, arteries, veins and capillaries. Question number 6. It is important that dressings remain, A. Tight to keep out bacteria. B. Loose to admit air. C. Clean and dry. D. Untouched until ordered or moved. The correct answer is, C. Clean and dry. If the dressing becomes soiled or saturated, notify the nurse. Question number 7. Drainage bags from urinary catheters should A. Be kept below the level of the bladder. B. Have clear urine, without sediment. C. Have their output measured. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the answers are correct. Always keep the urinary drainage bag below the level of the bladder to prevent urine from flowing back into the bladder from the tubing and urine bag, which could cause an infection. Nurse aides should also monitor the color and clarity of the urine and empty the drainage bag when half full and at the end of the shift. Question number 8. A patient tells a nurse's aide that the foods on her tray conflict with her religious beliefs. The nurse's assistant should. A. Tell the patient that it is all that is available. B. Leave the tray there in case she changes her mind. C. Check the patient's religious preference on the chart. D. Take the tray away and notify the charge nurse. The correct answer is, D. Take the tray away and notify the charge nurse. Because religious rights and cultural beliefs are protected, failure to adhere to all laws and regulations regarding religion and culture may result in legal difficulties stemming from discrimination. Question number 9. A nurse's aide notices blood in a patient's IV tubing. The aide should, A. Notify the nurse. B. Do nothing, that's normal. C. Try to flush the tubing. D. Stop the IV. The correct answer is, A. Notify the nurse. Most nurse aides are not legally allowed to prepare or give IV injections, or stop IV infusions. Question number 10. A patient calls the nurse's assistant and says, Someone spilled water onto my bed. The nurse's aide observes a moist area around the patient's perineum. 
the nurse's aide should a. Tell the patient that she has obviously had an accident. b. Tell the patient to ask for a bedpan when she needs one. c. Change the linens and make a mental note to offer the bedpan more often. d. Ask the doctor for an order for a catheter. The correct answer is, c. Clean the patient. Then change the linens and offer the bedpan more often. Assisting the resident to use the bedpan every two hours helps to decrease accidents. This is also referred to as bladder training. Question number 11. In report the nurse's aide is told that one of her patients has been ordered in PO after midnight. The aide should A. Take away the water pitcher at midnight. B. Offer frequent snacks. C. Note all water the patient drinks and all output. D. Ask the patient if he is having any pain. The correct answer is A. Dot take away the water pitcher at midnight. NPO means nothing by mouth and is a term used to identify patients who should not receive fluid or solids by mouth. Question number 12, a patient is leaving the hospital. The family has been told to change her dressings BID the wife asks what does that mean. The nurse's aide tells her to change the dressings. A twice a day. B three times a day. C once a day. D only when needed. The correct answer is A twice a day. BID is a medical abbreviation meaning twice a day. Question number 13. While taking a rectal temperature the nurse's aide should insert the thermometer and A. Go on his break. B. Hold on to the thermometer until it can be removed. C. Take care of other patients and return in three minutes. D. Stay in the room until it is time to read the temperature. The correct answer is B. Hold on to the thermometer until it can be removed. Care must be practiced when taking someone's temperature rectally. The rectal wall may be pierced or other pain may be caused by incorrect usage methods. Question number 14. Before performing any procedure an nurse aid must A. Identify the patient. B. Wash your hands. C. Explain the procedure. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. Identify patients to ensure that they receive the correct treatment or procedure. Hand washing reduces the spread of germs, while, explaining the procedure allows the patient time to ask questions and involves them in their care. Question number 15, a patient has a diagnosis of psoriasis. Her nurse's aide should, a. Avoid contact with the highly contagious lesions. b. Wear gloves for patient care. c. Treat her the same as any other patient with a non-infectious disease. d. Wear a mask when entering the room. The correct answer is, C. Treat her the same as any other patient with a non-infectious disease. Psoriasis is not contagious. The skin condition cannot be passed from one person to another. Question number 16, which of the following will not put undue strain onto the back? A. Crossing one's legs. B. Lifting with the knees. C. Slouching. D. Twisting the back while moving patients. The correct answer is, B. Lifting with the knees. Body mechanics is a term used to describe the ways we move as we go about our daily lives. It includes how we hold our bodies when we sit, stand, lift, carry, bend, and sleep. Poor body mechanics are often the cause of back problems. Question number 17. Which of the following is not true of blindness? A. Most legally blind or visually impaired people have no sight at all. B. Diabetes is a cause of blindness. C. Always identify yourself before touching a blind person. D. Ask if a blind person needs help before giving assistance. The correct answer is, A. Most legally blind or visually impaired people have no sight at all is not a true statement. In fact, most people who are legally blind have some vision. Question number 18. Which of the following is not true of dementia? A. People with dementia act uncooperative to be spiteful. B. They can have hallucinations. C. People with dementia are often frightened and anxious. D. Grooming is difficult for patients with dementia. The correct answer is, A. People with dementia act uncooperative to be spiteful is not true. Dementia patients who are mean and aggressive are most likely feeling fear, anger and embarrassment because they have been asked to use skills that they no longer have. Even extreme dementia behavior, such as pacing, rummaging, and wandering, should be addressed calmly and compassionately. 
Question number 19, which of the following is associated with smoking? A. Pneumonia. B. Heart attacks. C. Vitamin C deficiency. D. All of the above. The correct answer is, D. All of the above. Smoking causes cancer, heart disease, stroke, lung diseases, diabetes, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Smoking also increases risk for tuberculosis. Question number 20, most of our calories should come from, A. Protein, B. Fats, C. Carbohydrates, D. Vitamins. The correct answer is, C. Carbohydrates. The carbohydrate food group is one of three sources of nutrients and energy necessary for human survival. Carbohydrates are composed of a diverse group of foods, including grains, fruits, milk, and vegetables. Question number 21. Bloodborne infections include A. Hepatitis B. Pneumonia C. Shingles D. Urinary tract infection The correct answer is A. Hepatitis Bloodborne pathogens are viruses and bacteria that are found in the blood and can be transmitted via blood. Question number 22. Diabetes is A. Common B. Often associated with obesity and sedentary lifestyle C. Controllable D. All of the above the correct answer is, D, all of the above. Certain lifestyle changes can reduce the risk of diabetes. These changes include eating a nutritious diet with plenty of fiber, moving more, getting enough sleep, managing your stress levels, and avoiding smoking. Question number 23, goals of arthritis care include, A, preventing contractures, B, decreasing inflammation and preserving joints, C, strengthening bones and muscles. D. All of the above. The correct answer is, D. All of the above. For arthritis, goals typically include improving the mobility and restoring the use of affected joints, increasing strength to supporting the joint, and preserving the ability to perform daily activities. Question number 24, which will not prevent pressure sores, A. Repositioning or turning the patient every 2, 2, hours. B. Applying lotion to dry skin C. Keeping bed linens clean, dry, and free of wrinkles. D. Scrubbing and rubbing the skin vigorously. The correct answer is D. Scrubbing and rubbing the skin vigorously. Prolonged rubbing on the skin makes the skin sting or burn, and you develop a mild, red rash. In severe cases, chafing will include swelling, bleeding, or crusting. Question number 25. Why should heat not be applied to a diabetic resident's feet? A. The feet have more oil glands. B. Diabetics have decreased sensitivity which means they cannot feel the heat and could cause a burn. C. Their feet are dirty. D. It makes their feet wrinkle. The correct answer is B. Diabetics have decreased sensitivity which means they cannot feel the heat and could cause a burn. Question number 26. Which of the following should be immediately reported to a nurse when admitting a patient? A. Color of the stool and the amount of urine voided. B. How much the patient has eaten. C. Bruises, marks, rashes, or broken skin. D. Requests the patient makes. The correct answer is C. Failure to notice bruises or marks on the skin on admission may later cause someone to believe you were involved in abuse. Question number 27. When answering the phone, you should A. Take an order from the doctor if the nurse is busy. B. Say, may I help you? C. State your name and your department or floor. D. Say, the nurse will answer your call. The correct answer is C. When answering the phone, you should state your name and department. Question number 28. Which of the following things should you do to familiarize a new patient with his or her surroundings? A. Show the patient where the call bell is and how to work it. B. Tell the patient not to operate the television. C. Ask visitors to leave the room while you finish admitting the patient. D. Raise the side rails of the bed and raise the bed to high position. The correct answer is A. You should never leave a new admit until the patient knows how to call for help. Question number 29. A nurse aide should do all of the following except A. Check signal cords. B. Raise the head of bed at mealtime. C. Administer medications. D. Check lighting. The correct answer is C. 
nursing assistants are never allowed to give medications. Question number 30. When assisting a patient in and out of bed, you should always a. Use good body mechanics. b. Get a family member to help. c. Pull the patient's feet out first, and then lift the back up. d. Put stockings on the patient because the patient may slip. The correct answer is a. You should always use good body mechanics when moving patients. Question number 31. When should you wash your hands? a. When you notice they look or feel dirty. b. When the head nurse tells you to. c. At least twice a day. d. Before and after contact with a patient. The correct answer is d. You should wash your hands before and after contact with a patient. Question number 32. Which of the following is the correct procedure for serving a meal to a patient who must be fed? A. Serve the tray along with all the other trays, and then come back to feed the patient. B. Bring the tray to the patient last, feed after you have served all the other patients. C. Bring the tray into the room when you are ready to feed the patient. D. Have the kitchen hold the tray for one hour. The correct answer is C. You should not bring the tray into the room until you have time to feed the patient. Question number 33. A newly admitted patient has dirty fingernails. When giving the patient a bath, you should first, A. Soak the nails. B. Trim the nails. C. Apply extra lotion. D. Clean the nails with a metal file. The correct answer is A. Soaking the nails first will make cleaning them easier. Question number 34. A patient appears more pale than usual. The nurse's aide should, A. Note it on the chart. B. Ask the patient how she feels and take her vital signs immediately. C. Get the patient a snack. D. Offer a glass of water. The correct answer is B. Ask the patient how she feels and take her vital signs immediately. Also, notify the nurse of the findings. Question number 35. The most serious problem that wrinkles in the bedclothes can cause is a. Restlessness. b. Sleeplessness. c. Decubitus ulcers. d. Bleeding and shock. The correct answer is c. The most serious problem that wrinkles in the bedclothes can cause patients are decubitus ulcers, or bed sores. Question number 36. When making a bed, you can save steps and time if you a. Assemble all needed linen before starting to make the bed. b. Tuck in bottom linen and top linen at the foot of bed before going to the head of bed. c. Use only fitted sheets. d. Ask for help from the head nurse. The correct answer is a. Gathering all supplies first is a time saver. Question number 37. One important way to reduce the incidence of decubitus ulcers is to a. Keep the patient in bed. b. Force fluids every two hours. C. Change position every two hours. D. All of the above. The correct answer is C. Changing the patient's position every two hours prevents bed sores. Question number 38. You are told to put a patient in Fowler's position. Before changing the position of the patient's bed, you should A. Open the window. B. Explain the procedure to the patient. C. Check with the patient's family. D. Remake the bed. The correct answer is B. You should always explain procedures first. Question number 39. Frequent turning and repositioning of the client helps prevent A. Cyanosis. B. Indigestion. C. Coronary disease. D. Pressure injuries. The correct answer is D. Repositioning helps prevent pressure injuries. Question number 40. As a safety measure, when you give mouth care to an unconscious patient, you should position the patient, A, on her or his back, B, in semi-fowler's position, C, with the head turned to the side, D, in the supine position. The correct answer is C. Turning the head to the side prevents aspiration and allows the secretions to drain out of the mouth. Question number 41. When you obtain a clean catch urine specimen, you should a. Wash the patient's hands. b. Use clean techniques. c. Use sterile techniques. d. Perform the procedure in the bathroom. 
The correct answer is B. A clean catch urine specimen does not require sterile technique. Question number 42. The client's signaling device should be placed A. On the bed B. Within the client's reach C. On the client's right side D. Over the side rail The correct answer is B. Place the signaling device within the client's reach or directly in the client's hand. Question number 43. When lifting a heavy object, you should bend at the A. Waist, keeping your legs straight B. Waist, rounding your shoulders C. Knees, keeping your back straight D. Knees and waist The correct answer is C. Keeping your back straight forces you to use your strong leg muscles. Question number 44. A client who is confused begins to cry and scream out for his parent. What should the nurse aide do next? A. Place the client in a geriatric chair. B. Restrain the client in his bed. C. Talk to the client in a calm voice about familiar things. D. Leave the client alone in his room until he calms down. The correct answer is C. Talk to the client in a calm voice about familiar things. Question number 45. When shaving a patient, you should A. Wet the patient's face. B. Apply after shave lotion when done. C. Give the patient a mirror when done. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All the answers are correct. Question number 46. When cleaning a patient's dentures at the sink, the reason to either line the amethyst basin with a paper towel or to fill the sink with water is to A. Prevent contamination of the dentures. B. Hide the dentures from view. C. Guard against breaking the dentures. D. Protect the basin from scratches. The correct answer is C. The purpose of this procedure is to prevent breakage. Question number 47. When assisting a patient with eating, one of the first things you should do is A. Cut the food into large bite-sized pieces. B. Wash your hands and the patient's hands. C. Butter the patient's bread. D. Provide the patient with privacy. The correct answer is B. Always remember to consider infection control. Question number 48. A resident has a new cast on his right arm. While caring for him, you should observe for A. Pulse above the cast. B. Color and hardness of the cast. C. Warmth and color of fingers. D. Signs of crumbling at the cast end. The correct answer is C. A new cast may cut off circulation. Choice C reminds you to check for circulatory impairment. Question number 49. Encouraging a patient to take part in activities of daily living such as bathing, combing hair, and feeding is A. Done only when time permits. B. The family's responsibility. C. Necessary for rehabilitation. D. A violation of patient rights. The correct answer is C. Rehabilitation should always be part of the care plan. Question number 50. When giving a complete bed bath, you should A. Not wash the patient's genitals because the patient will feel embarrassed. B. Use the same water throughout the bath to save you from extra trips. C. Keep the patient covered as much as possible. D. Position yourself on one side of the bed and stay there. The correct answer is C. The other choices are wrong because of improper care techniques or body mechanics. Question number 51. A patient is sobbing. What is the best thing for the nursing assistant to say? A. Stop crying. B. Please, try to cheer up. C. You do this every day. D. You appear sad. The correct answer is D. You appear sad. Communicate with kindness and encourage the patient to voice their concerns. Monitor for signs of depression with elderly patients, which include the loss of appetite and sadness. Question number 52. A patient has had hip surgery. Her legs should be A. Abducted. B. Abducted. C. In the most comfortable position for the patient. D. Elevated. The correct answer is A. Abducted. Most patients use an abduction pillow after hip surgery. Question number 53. A patient rings for the bedpan while visitors are in the room. The nurse assistant should A. Wait until the visitors leave. B. Give the bedpan to the patient in front of family. 
C. Asked the visitors to leave the room during the procedure. D. Asked the supervisor what to do. The correct answer is C. Asked the visitors to leave the room during the procedure. This allows the patient time for privacy while using the bedpan. Question number 54. A patient complains of pain. A nurse aide who has completed the basic certified nursing assistant course should A. Get the patient some pain medication. B. Call the doctor. C. Tell the medication nurse. D. Tell the patient to tell the medication nurse when he or she comes in. The correct answer is C. Tell the medication nurse. As a nurse aide, you cannot give medications. However, you may be able to use non pharmacological therapies, such as massage, repositioning, and range of motion exercises. Question number 55 Which of the following should be reported immediately? A. A blood pressure of 90 over 40. B. A pulse of 90. C. Respirations of 12. D. Temperature of 99.4. The correct answer is A. A blood pressure of 90 over 40 is considered to be a low blood pressure reading. Question number 56. A patient known to have Alzheimer's disease tells the nurse assistant that she smells smoke. The nurse aide should A. Reassure the patient that there is no fire. B. Tell her that no one is allowed to smoke in the building. C. Look around for a fire. D. Put the patient to bed because she is clearly tired. The correct answer is C. Look around for a fire. Patients with memory loss can have moments of clarity. Question number 57. An aide is pushing a resident down the hall with a wheelchair when a call light lights up. The aide should A. Continue pushing the patient and assume someone else will answer the call. B. Take the patient inside the room while answering the call. C. Put the patient back to bed and then answer the call. D. Push the patient to a safe place, apply the wheel locks, and answer the call. The correct answer is D. Push the patient to a safe place, apply the wheel locks, and answer the call. Patient safety is your priority. Question number 58. Trays have arrived. Before serving each tray, the nurse aide should A. Check each armband, even on familiar patients. B. Ask about dietary restrictions. C. Check the temperature of the food. D. Ask patients if they are hungry. The correct answer is A. Check each armband, even on familiar patients to ensure that the patient has received the correct tray. Question number 59. Nurse aides should always wear underscore. A. Clean uniforms. B. Comfortable nursing shoes. C. Socks without obvious holes. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Question number 60. A resident complains that his children never visit. The aide should A. Tell him that they will come soon. B. Tell him not to worry, it will be alright. C. Listen with empathy. D. Tell him that he should have been nicer on the last visit. The correct answer is C. Listen with empathy. Active listening is a technique used by healthcare providers to reflect on what a patient has said and can help patients feel better understood. Question number 61. A patient appears more pale than usual. The nurse's aide should A. Note it on the chart. B. Ask the patient how she feels and take her vital signs immediately. C. Get the patient a snack. D. Offer a glass of water. The correct answer is B. Ask the patient how she feels and take her vital signs immediately. Changes in skin color could indicate that there has been a change in her vital signs. Question number 62. After the end of the shift some nurse aides go to a restaurant. Acceptable topics of conversation would include A. Their patients. B. Procedures that others in the restaurant might not want to hear about. C. Hospital politics. D. The weather. The correct answer is D. The weather. Keep patient and work-related information confidential. Question number 63. A patient who is given insulin in the morning is pale and sweaty and appears confused two hours later. It would be helpful to find out whether the patient A. Has diabetes B. Had breakfast C. Had visitors that day D. Ate too much sugar The correct answer is B. Ask if the resident had breakfast. His blood glucose level could be low. Question number 64. A resident's daughter expresses concern because her father, 
who has Parkinson's disease, appears stuck at times and stands still, unable to walk. The nurse's assistant should tell the daughter that a. That is a common sign of Parkinson's disease. b. Her father has likely had a stroke. c. He is confused. d. He just doesn't feel like walking. The correct answer is a. A freezing gait is a common sign of Parkinson's disease. Question number 65. A resident is standing in the hallway holding a bag and asks the nurse aide when the train is due. The aide should tell her a. That she is being ridiculous. B. Where she is, in a calm tone of voice. C. To go back to her room. D. That it should be here any time now. The correct answer is B. Tell the resident where she is, in a calm tone of voice. Orient and reorient patients by explaining where they are, who they are, and your role in their health care. Question number 66. On what side should the patient lie for an enema? A. Right. B. Left. See whichever side is more comfortable. D. The side closer to the restroom. The correct answer is B. The reason for laying on the left side is for gravity to assist the fluid filling the colon. When the patient lays on the left side, the fluid can go up further into the colon. Question number 67. What is the best way of keeping a skilled nursing facility from having an unpleasant odor? A. Keep all the windows open. B. Use an air freshener regularly. C. Empty bedpans and change linens in a timely manner. D. There is nothing you can do. The correct answer is C. Empty bedpans and change linens in a timely manner. Question number 68. A nursing assistant notices red marks on a resident's buttocks and heels. The aide acts in the knowledge that A. Red marks are not a problem. B. The skin can break down if nothing is done. C. Patients can only be turned every two hours. D. It takes a doctor's order to rub skin with lotion. The correct answer is B. The skin can break down if nothing is done. Reposition the patient and notify the nurse of the reddened areas. Question number 69. A patient complains that her hand hurts where the IV is running. The nursing assistant notices that the hand is puffy. The best thing to do is a. Notify the medication nurse that the patient is complaining of pain. B. Reassure the patient that needles always hurt. C. Put ice onto the hand. D. Notify the nurse that the infusion appears to have infiltrated. The correct answer is D. Notify the nurse that the infusion appears to have infiltrated. An infiltrated intravenous catheter happens when the catheter goes through or comes out of your vein. The IV fluid then leaks into the surrounding tissue. This may cause pain, swelling, and skin that is cool to the touch. Some IV medicines can cause your skin and tissue to die, necrosis, if they leak into your tissues. Question number 70. A nurse aide walks into a room and sees that the patient is not breathing. The first thing the aide does is, A. Press the alarm to call the CPR team. B. Shake the patient's shoulder while shouting his name. C. Hit the patient's chest. D. Tilt the patient's head back and give two quick breaths. The correct answer is A. Press the alarm to call the CPR team. You can begin hands-only CPR while waiting for the CPR team to arrive with the crash cart and resuscitation equipment, if the patient does not have a do not resuscitate order. Question number 71. A patient complains of feeling short of breath and nauseated. Her face is rapidly turning red. She tells the nurse aide that she didn't know there were strawberries in the gelatin she ate. The aide should A. Notify the nurse immediately. B. Tell the patient that fruit is good for you. C. Take away the tray. D. Note on the chart that the patient appears to be allergic to strawberries. The correct answer is A. Notify the nurse immediately. A serious life-threatening allergic reaction, known as anaphylaxis, can occur within few seconds or minutes of exposure to allergic substances. This involves hives, swelling and sudden drop in the blood pressure and sometimes shock. Question number 72. The brain is part of the A. Locomotor system. B. Endocrine system. C. Nervous system. D. Exocrine system. The correct answer is C. The nervous system has two main parts. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord. 
The peripheral nervous system is made up of nerves that branch off from the spinal cord and extend to all parts of the body. Question number 73, which of the following causes the most infections in healthcare facilities? A. Airborne bacteria. B. Unwashed hands. C. Contaminated food. D. Sick visitors. The correct answer is B. Unwashed hands. Washing hands prevents illnesses and spread of infections to others. Hand washing with soap removes germs from hands. Question number 74. There is an order to give the patient a shower, but she refuses. The nurse assistant should A. Take the patient to the shower anyway. B. Tell her that she must do what is ordered. C. Document in the chart that the patient refused to shower. D. Threaten to use restraints if she does not cooperate. The correct answer is C. Document in the chart that the patient refused to shower. Ask the patient the reason for refusing. Also, notify the nurse. Although, patients have the right to refuse care, daily bathing can help keep the patient's skin healthy, control odor, increase comfort, and allows the nurse aid a chance to assess for skin breakdown. Question number 75, a patient suddenly complains of feeling weak on one side while he is getting a bed bath. The nurse's assistant should, A. Tell him that weakness is normal at his age. B. Prop him up with pillows. C. Report this to a nurse immediately. D. Pass it on at end of shift. The correct answer is C. Report this to a nurse immediately. Facial drooping, slurred speech, and sudden weakness on one side of the body are signs of a stroke. Question number 76. When getting ready to make a bed, the nurse aide should place the clean linens on A. A chair or table beside the bed. B. The roommate's bed. C. A clean surface in the bathroom. D. The floor beside the bed. The correct answer is A. Place the clean linens on a chair or bedside table instead of on a contaminated surface. Question number 77. The only purpose for using a restraint is to A. Ensure the safety of the client or others. B. Make the nurse aide's job easier. C. Calm a client who is verbally abusive. D. Help the client be quiet. The correct answer is A. Restraints are used to help ensure the safety of the client and others. Question number 78. Articles contaminated with blood or body fluids should be disposed of in the A. Soiled linen basket. B. Biohazard container. C. Soiled utility room. D. Client's room trash container. The correct answer is B. Place items that are contaminated with blood or body fluids in a biohazard container. Question number 79, to avoid pulling the indwelling urethral catheter when turning a client, the catheter tubing should be secured to the clients. A. Bed sheet. B. Upper thigh. C. Bed frame. D. Hip. The correct answer is B. Secure the catheter tubing to the upper thigh with tape or a securing device. Question number 80, when collecting a 24-hour urine sample for a client, the nurse aide should request that the client, A, take a bath or shower before starting the urine collection. B, select food items that do not contain red meat. C, drink 2 liters of water. D, discard the first voided urine. The correct answer is D. The client is asked to void and discard the urine from the first voiding. In some instances, a preservative is added to the collection bottle, the collected urine is kept cold through refrigeration, or it is kept on ice. Question number 81. When ambulating the client, the nurse aide should A. Ask the nurse for help. B. Be sure the client is wearing non-skid footwear. C. Ask a family member for assistance. D. Walk in front of the client and show the client the way. The correct answer is B. To ensure patient safety, the client must have on non-skid footwear before walking. Question number 82. Which of the following is the best personal protective equipment item for the nurse aide to wear when handling infectious waste that could splash or spray? A. Shoe covers. B. A mask. C. Goggles. D. A face shield. The correct answer is D. A face shield protects the entire face from accidental splashes. Question number 83. 
Which of the following would be an appropriate response for the nurse aide to make if a client expresses anger during care? A. Why are you being so mean today? B. You should not say such mean things to people. C. I will come back when your bad mood is over. D. You seem upset. Would you like to talk about it? The correct answer is D. You seem upset. Would you like to talk about it? Question number 84. The nurse aide has raised the height of the client's bed to provide care to the client, but the nurse aide forgot to bring the supplies needed. What should the nurse aide do next? A. Instruct the client to lie still. B. Quickly go to get the supplies. C. Lower the bed and place the call light within reach. D. Ask the roommate to watch the client while the nurse aide gets the supplies. The correct answer is C. Ensure patient safety by lowering the bed and placing the call light within reach. Question number 85. A client requests that the nurse aide call the client's spiritual advisor. The nurse aide should A. Ask the client why the client wants the nurse aide to call the client's spiritual advisor. B. Tell the client that this is not part of the nurse aide's job. C. Tell the client that the nurse aide will inform the nurse of the client's request. D. Call the spiritual advisor for the client. The correct answer is C. Tell the client that the nurse aide will inform the nurse of the client's request. Doing so gives the nurse an opportunity to assess the client's emotional state and coordinate a visit from the spiritual advisor if requested. Question number 86. A client wakes up during the night and asks for something to eat. The nurse aide should A. Check client's diet before offering nourishment. B. Tell the client nothing is available at night. C. Explain that breakfast is coming in 3 hours. D. Tell the client that eating is not allowed during the night. The correct answer is A. Check the client's diet before offering nourishment. Question number 87. The nurse aide is preparing to bathe the client. What should the nurse aide do first? A. Test the temperature of the water. B. Help the client undress. C. Tell the client what the nurse aide is going to do. D. Close the door and windows. The correct answer is C. Tell the client what the nurse aide is going to do and ask for the client's permission before starting the bath water. Question number 88. When making a bed that is occupied by a client, the nurse aide should A. Leave the bed in the lowest position at the completion of the skill. B. Only replace the top sheet. C. Leave the bottom sheet untucked. D. Place oiled linens on the floor. The correct answer is A. Leave the bed in the lowest position at the completion of the skill. Question number 89. Frequent turning and repositioning of the client helps prevent A. Cyanosis. B. Indigestion. C. Coronary disease. D. Pressure injuries. The correct answer is D. Repositioning helps prevent pressure injuries. Question number 90. When applying compression stockings to the client, it would be best to do so while the client is A. Lying down in bed. B. Dangling the legs from the edge of the bed. C. Standing at the side of the bed. D. Sitting in a wheelchair. The correct answer is A. Compression stockings improve blood flow and are best applied while the resident is lying down in bed. Question number 91. The nurse aide is in the employee dining room. A group of nurse aides are eating lunch together and begin discussing how rude a certain client was acting. The nurse aide should A. Join in the conversation. B. Suggest that this is not the place to discuss the client. C. Be quiet and not say anything to the other nurse aides. D. Return to the unit and tell the client what was said. The correct answer is B. Suggest that this is not the place to discuss the client. Question number 92. The client's signaling device should be placed A. On the bed. B. Within the client's reach. C. On the client's right side. D. Over the side rail. The correct answer is B. Place the signaling device within the client's reach or directly in the client's hand. Question number 93. When helping a client who is recovering from a stroke to walk, the nurse aide should assist A. On the client's strong side. B. On the client's weak side. C. From behind the client. D. With a wheelchair. 
The correct answer is B. The nurse aide should assist on the client's weak side. Question number 94. A client who is confused begins to cry and scream out for his parent. What should the nurse aide do next? A. Place the client in a geriatric chair. B. Restrain the client in his bed. C. Talk to the client in a calm voice about familiar things. D. Leave the client alone in his room until he calms down. The correct answer is C. Talk to the client in a calm voice about familiar things. Question number 95. Which of the following actions would be best for the nurse aide to take to show respect to the spiritual needs of a client? A. Escorting the client to religious services. B. Discussing the nurse aide's religion with the client. C. Assisting the client to her religious materials. D. Requesting that the facility's spiritual advisor visits the client. The correct answer is C. Assisting the client to read the client's religious materials. Question number 96. While the nurse aide is providing care to the client, the client calls the nurse aide by the name of the client's child, who died several years ago. The nurse aide's best response would be to A. Quickly finish providing care and leave the client alone. B. Pretend to be the client's child. C. Ignore the client because the client is confused. D. Ask the client about the client's favorite memories of the client's child. The correct answer is D. Ask the client about the client's favorite memories of the client's child. Question number 97. When providing care for a client receiving oxygen therapy, the nurse aide should A. Check the ears for pressure points. B. Tape cracks in oxygen tubing. C. Let the nurse know that the nurse aide cannot care for the client. D. Change the flow rate if the client is short of breath. The correct answer is A. Check the client's ears for pressure points. Question number 98. A client falls and suffers a deep cut on the forehead. What should the nurse aide do next? A. Take the client to the hospital. B. Help the client back to the bed. C. Take the client into the bathroom to wash out the cut. D. Stay with the client and call for help. The correct answer is D. Stay with the client and call for help. Question number 99. The client has been sad and depressed since being admitted to the facility yesterday. What would be the best thing for the nurse aide to do for the client? A. Arrange for the client's spiritual advisor to visit the client. B. Turn on the television in the client's room and leave the client alone. C. Force the client to take part in facility activities. D. Introduce the client to other clients and staff members. The correct answer is D. Introduce the client to the other clients and staff members. Question number 100. You are assigned to assist Mrs. Kelly with her lunch. She is on bed rest. The best position for her, if permitted, would be A. Supine B. Hyperextension C. Dangling at the side of the bed D. Semifowlers The correct answer is D. The semifowlers position is correct because the patient is on bed rest and should not be allowed to dangle from the side of bed. Thank you for watching and subscribing to our channel. Florida Training Academy is a nurse-owned medical and safety training business. Visit us online at fltraining.com.